Hello everyone, welcome back to strategic management class. In this video, it is internal analysis part 2. In the first one, we have discussed about resources, capabilities that leads to core competency. And in this video, we're going to discuss about core competency that leads to competitive advantage and the resource-based theory. Alright, let's start with the first one, which is core competency that leads to competitive advantage. So core competency is basically uh, capabilities of companies that has been carefully selected. That is the main uh, part of the business. The business is very specialized in doing all of the um, activities that they have chosen. And this uh, list becomes what we call competitive advantage. Now, competitive advantage itself is defined as uh, anything that a firm or a company does especially well compared to competitor firms. All right, so this is something that they're very good at compared to other companies. And where do we find competitive advantage? It actually lies with its managerial and organizational processes shaped by its specific asset position and the paths available to it. Now, these are very specific sentence, very specific definition, but let me break it down for you. Basically, when you try to build a competitive advantage, uh, it's not going to be the same for all companies if they have the same resources. Why so? Because when you build a competitive advantage, you're combining the list of resources that, you're, that you have, that you're good at, the list of skills that you have and you're good at, you combine them for over a period of time, you become very good at it, and you have created something new so that you have different paths. The different decision that you make with your competitors obviously is going to be different. Therefore, will be resulting different competitive advantages. Okay, when we refer to the theory of resource-based view or resource-based theory, it is the same thing. Um, this theory states that the approach to competitive advantage contends that the mix, type, amount, and nature of a firm's internal resources are more important for the firm or the company than external factors to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage. So basically, in this view, the theory says that if you want your company to be the top of the competition is by looking at the internal sources of the company. You try to improve, innovate from within, and it will be reflected within the competition in the industry. And with that theory, um, they say that sustainable competitive advantage will be able to be built as long as the competitive advantage that you design is hard to imitate and it's going to last for a long time. Now let's identify which resources up until core competency that can lead to competitive advantage or is it a sustainable one? Take a look at this slide. It is called the VRIO or the VRIN framework. This framework helps uh, you guys and everyone to identify from resources, capabilities, or core competencies up until uh, whether it is a competitive advantage or not. The first one, which is V, it stands for valuable. So the first one, we try to figure out whether the resources or the capability that the company has is valuable or not. If it's not valuable, then it is called a competitive disadvantage because it creates a negativity or basically a loss or something that is negative for the company. But if it's valuable, then we move on to the next part, which is R. R stands for rare. And here we try to identify whether the resources or capability that is valuable, is it rare or not? 
if it's not rare, which means other people can easily access what you have, um, it is called competitive parity, which means you or your company and your competitors is practically the same. So you're uh, similar or in par. And then if it's rare, if the resources and capability is rare, then we move on to the next one, which is the I. I stands for inimitable, which means that after we identify if the resources or capability is valuable, it's rare, we now identify whether it can be copied or not. If the resources or capability can easily be copied, it means that it is a temporary competitive advantage. In this sense is that if you have something that is already good, but other competitors can just figure it out and try to imitate or copy what you do within the next few months, it means that whatever you have as a competitive advantage is only for a short while. But if the answer is yes, then we move on to the final one, which is O, which stands for organize. Means that is what you have can be organized or not. So if the resources and capabilities can be organized, means that you can arrange it, you can manage it, um, then it is called a sustained competitive advantage. But if you can't, then it is called an unused competitive advantage. Because what is the use of um, an asset that you have, but you cannot do anything about it? Um, in regards to competitive advantage, I would challenge you guys to reflect and also think about some current issues that have risen throughout the past decades. The two issues are substitution, which is the issue of a product or a service, or even a competitive advantage that can be substituted by other product or services. How do we deal with this? And then the second issue is called uh, a new thing that is called dynamic capability, which means companies cannot just stay as the way they are for a very long period of time, but they need to have something that is called uh, the ability to be flexible, to be dynamic, to be agile in response to whatever happening in the environment. Next, you can take a look at this table. This table will help you to list out and figure out what path leads to uh, competitive disadvantage, competitive parity, temporary competitive advantage, or sustainable competitive advantage, and what would be the performance implications if you have a certain result. That is all about internal analysis of a company. Salam, entrepreneur.